everybody. We will bring the finance meeting, November 9th meeting to order. Uh, we will start off with uh, roll call. I am here. Council member Carter is here and council member Watson is here. We will slide right into item number one with a uh, personnel update with our new HR manager, Debbie Mills. Welcome. Thank you. Where are you writing? Yeah, I, was gonna say, I printed this off just before I showed up. I'm going to need a copy of that. <laughs> <laughs> copy of that. I can give you the hard okay, copy. thank you. Okay, so here is for my first uh, update for our um, for recreation. We sent out an offer letter to for a substitute site assistant, and the current site assistant has received a letter <laughs> to me to AM and PM which um, I wasn't really sure what that meant, but she person working enough hours to now become CRS eligible. We recruited for a records clerk. We had 93 applications, 19 were forwarded to the department. Yeah, that's a lot. And we um, interviewed today, we interviewed seven individuals. And let's see, the accounting specialist cashier, the first review of um, the recruitment will be 1115, so it's going to be closing next year. The assistant planner and code enforcement position. We have made an offer and it was accepted for an associate planner. Her name is Betty Razel. She's starting on November 6th. Cool. Yeah. Let's. Um, the Senior Center Aid Cook Part-Time Kitchen Aid has accepted the full-time Senior Center position and started on November 5th. So for a while. Yeah, has it? Yeah. I'm here like five days now, so I'm catching up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and apparently we still have two part-time open in the center for the dishwasher and um, yeah. <laughs> Not the mixer. <laughs> 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 I didn't say that, but the back, yeah. Yeah. I did um, The youth sport official positions that there are continuous recruitment, so that's still ongoing. And also, we are going to be posting for a senior center assistant resignation, and we will be doing the internal posting tomorrow, closing it on the 17th, so that we could get it out to the public if necessary. And then some upcoming recruitments that uh, might happen are plans examiner, building inspector, and a team. We shouldn't be bored anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we are very busy in recruiting, and I love to recruit. So we get back on track. Yeah. On the site director position, it's before school and after school, so that's the uh, AM PM. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. On to business action items. AB 21-137, Ordinance 137, a biennial budget amendment for 2021 and 22. Jerry, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep, yes. All right. So in your packet, I wasn't going to do a screen share. It's kind of hard uh, to do that and let you guys see the screen. So in your packet, um, you'll see the budget amendment. I tried to really be transparent in this process. Uh, on the first, well, on the exhibit B, you'll see all of the general fund additional requests, whether they're for 21 or 22. And most every request has already been approved by the council. I've included the resolution or ordinance number in which the council has approved them. I also included how we anticipate to pay for some of these um, additions and it looks like we should end the year with at least $300,000 over what I had projected with the uh, ending fund balance. I know last time we talked, we weren't really projecting much of an ending fund balance for 2021. Very good. <clears throat> um, yeah, we have a little bit of grant loss, but we also have a grant we're receiving. Um, there are some decreased expenses that have helped save us some money as well as some increased sales tax revenue, basically. Uh, the requests, you can see those listed out below. Um, the business grants you guys have already approved, uh, limited duration emergency management 
position, which Ryan will speak to here shortly. Um, for the legal department, there's the uh, resignation package you guys already approved, and then the contract with Iver, which was already approved, as well as the deputy prosecutor, which has not been approved. And I believe Dina will speak about uh, her wishes on that here shortly. Uh, for information services, you have approved the microwave technology, the AVIA upgrade, as well as net motion from ARPA. That one's still, I believe, going to council. Uh, no, it got approved last time. Uh, and then the laptops. For police, they've requested that bailiff position um, is in the CSO for a full-time position, the one that moved from the court. So that's included for 2022, as well as the body cameras. And that has also already been approved by council. One of the community development grants was approved uh, and authorized. So that one has been included in this. Uh, the only thing that you guys have not approved yet, and we discussed as the finance committee was the timesheet payroll software upgrade, which I promised to bring back to you before we move forward. Uh, once I get some time to evaluate it a little better. And then uh, with the ARPA funds, increasing the generalist uh, for 21 and 22. In the other funds, uh, there was the food bank demo uh, that you guys approved for 2021, pavement scoring for 2021, uh, some water fund upgrades, which includes upgrading Neptune software. Uh, that contract will go to CDC next week and then to council on the 23rd for approval. And then the park CIP, the Eli Hill grant staircase, it was part of the grant, so that was already approved. And then some unspent money for the Public Works Center, just to make sure they're allowed to use all of the money um, that we've received in that. There was a little bit of interest from 2020 that didn't get budgeted in 2021. Any questions on the specific um, amendment before Dina and uh, Ryan get started on the decision cards for this amendment? I just had a question on the CSO position. What was that all in the police field or was that half court, half police? I can't remember how that worked. Yeah, so we'll all be in the police department now. It used to be so <laughs> I and I get your confusion. It's moved back and forth. It used to be in the police, then it went to court, and now it's going back to the police. They had a half time unfunded position and unfilled. <coughs> Excuse me. We've moved the bailiff position out of the court to help fund the full-time CSO position, which will support the bailiff. Thank you. Where does the money go that courts had that had the bailiff money? I moved it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to police? Yeah, it goes to help fund this position. <clears throat> Just wanna make sure we weren't leaving that out somewhere. Okay. Anyone else? I'm Just good. Over? Yeah. All right. So we'll turn before. it over to you and Ryan. And rock, paper, scissors. Oh, yeah, I guess I've, I've been um, uh, designated to go first. All right, good evening. Um, so um, my proposal is to hire a new full-time prosecutor. It would be um, an assistant city attorney-prosecutor. Um, I think there might be a typo. It's not supposed to be deputy city attorney. And um, but on the decision card, it's assistant city attorney-prosecutor. Um, Back in August, um, I presented about how there's been um, a huge increase in workload for the prosecutor's office. Um, there's, um, you know, as the chief just briefed during the public safety meeting, um, crimes are going up. The city of Bonnie Lake's population has increased. Um, there's more businesses here. And as a result, um, there's, uh, there's more crime. Um, and that creates more work for the prosecutor's office. So the proposal is um, for one full-time employee that would be an assistant city attorney prosecutor. This would be an entry-level position. Um, I looked at the uh, Sumner uh, salary survey as well as other job postings in the area. I chose it's the N18 pay band. Um, so this would be a starting pay of um, basically $91,788 annually. Um, if you look at other cities that have hired recently, during the hiring an assistant city attorney with two years of experience, starting at 108,000. 
Uh, Federal Way was hiring an entry level prosecutor willing to consider a rule nine. Their starting salary was $91,260. Um, so that is comparable to other areas and other cities in the area. Um, so this person would um, do appear in court. Um, they would help with, um, you know, as the judge was here briefing earlier in the public safety meeting, um, the court decision of State v. Lake has pushed a lot of drug cases now onto the misdemeanor level court. That's increasing the workload. Um, they would be, you know, working on therapeutic court. Um, they could be, you know, helping the brief police officers on changes to the law. Um, we get a lot of referrals from Pierce County that are sometimes urgent matters that need to be filed. So if one prosecutor is in court, the other prosecutor can be interacting with law enforcement or filing um, charges or maybe briefing police officers. Um, it also will more easily allow for um, vacation or um, sick time in the office because right now there's, there's only one attorney. We're having to hire a contract attorney and that creates less, a lot less continuity in the office. Um, if we, um, looking at other departments, um, since 2011, the Bonnie Lake Police Department has um, add, added five budgeted police officer positions. Eatonville, who the prosecutor's office also serves, has added one budgeted police officer position. So other departments that the prosecutor's office interacts with have increased in size. So I think it makes sense for the prosecutor's office also um, to grow as well as the city grows and other departments. And how will Eatonville be absorbing any of these costs? We have a proposal to Eatonville with their contract renewal that um, they pay $72,000 a year for prosecution services. We have not heard back yet as to whether they're accepting that. Um, if they don't, they would have to go to district court and they have to pay there as well. So we're hopeful that they will agree is, to our terms. Is that 72,000 in addition or is that an increase up to 72,000? That would be 72,000 a year. Right now they're, they're paying very little and it's not separated out in the current, the current contract is about 10 years old. It did not clearly separate out court payment for court services versus payment for prosecution services. So it would be a substantial increase. So if they accept that, that basically covers 75% of these costs? Yeah, it, it would cover a substantial amount, yes. Okay. And looking at this, if we, tripled contract prosecution, we'd still be saving $25,000 a year over this. Is there any reason to do that or not to do that? So if you, um, sorry, I need to do math on my phone. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, so right now our current contract prosecutor is um, $75 an hour. Um, so if you were to hire a full-time contract prosecutor, that would be a um, hundred Assuming they worked 40 hours a week, which often a, a, a salary prosecutor is working more than that, you would be paying at least 150. I know, but you're saying right now we're currently paying 26,000, so we're obviously not doing a full well, 40 hour a week. Right, that was, yes, and we've already spent all that money that was budgeted for this year. Okay. Already um, ran out. So that was a very part time contract prosecutor. Okay. Position. So this would be a full time position. And Assistant City Attorney. Correct. I'm, the way you, I don't I'm, I don't know all the terms or anything, but our City Attorney is Kathleen. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and this is an assistant to Kathleen. Be an assistant to me. I'm okay. the deputy. My title is Deputy City Attorney. So usually it goes City Attorney, Deputy City City Attorney. Okay. Some cities that have larger legal departments have multiple assistant City Attorneys. Okay. Okay, it is just the, the title, the scene. Serving you and, and Kathleen's, I mean, that person served us right. Tom or Terry? Well, how does this compare, John, to what Maylee wanted to do six this, months this ago? This is what Maylee wanted to do six months ago. Okay, months. well, but she would have been the city attorney at the same time, too. So well, now yeah. we're going to end up with two attorneys and a city, three one attorney for the whole city and two here. So we're adding more dollars than we had in six months ago, correct? Am I can put it? No, because I believe six months ago the budget proposal was. Okay. Whereas this is Kathleen's firm. Right. City, the overall city attorney. 
adding a prosecutor under Was that the revised uh, decision card that we, because I know the initial one was mainly moving to that, but then there was a revision that I thought was really similar to this. Hold it that first night and then just. Yeah, okay. I believe that we're moving. This, yeah. Prosecutor position yeah. to assist me at that time. All right. What about Sumner? Are we looking at what they're paying for their courts in general? Is that for, for they were locked in for, for them coming up here? Uh, for court services? Court services. Um, just looking for things to offset the expense. So they provide their own they provide right. their own They do the home. They, okay. they, yeah, yeah, they, they just use our so facility. So okay. They actually contract with the same prosecutor um, that we contract with, Alex Ivor and Will. On your mind, Terry? Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the whole, like you said, the three attorneys and, and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I think we need to do things, something, yes, right? Something. And I just want to make sure that what it seems like that is. I, I'm also interested in, like, a city attorney for us that would be our city attorney that we're not contracting out because I know that costs a lot of money as well. And obviously, that's not what we're talking about here. So I'm just—I got a lot of things going on. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's certainly yeah. keep in mind in the memo that you know was printed. You know, Dina had laid out the, the number of. Yeah. By uh, upside, you that you've approved it. Department in court to to recognize the. Clerks in the court department. I believe we have a half time. Council staffing levels. Court itself to recognize this increased load. We have not made similar adjustments. Believe the needs there. I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, I would agree to just trying to make the right decision, make sure we're, you know, because of what we talked about before with me and the city attorney, and nice to have someone in house, the city attorney working full time, and also helping these folks here, too. And that's my only concern I have. That's if that's something we're not we're overlooking. We should, but you don't use Kathleen that many hours a week, I would assume. I don't know. You know it, it ended up being a lot more than we thought it was. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. I mean, certainly, if that's something you want to look at, it. I mean, in no time we'll be working on the next the next budget of. Oh, well, I know, and I hate to overlook this. this summer. Right? Yeah, <clears throat> right. Well, when is this coming before us? Uh, well, it's on uh, finance committee tonight. The workshop this week on uh, the twenty third for approval. Okay. So all all we're doing tonight is just moving it forward to the workshop. Yes. So this will be a, a yes. Cal workshop. Yes. Okay. And like I said, I agree. This, there was a need there. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. make the picture, make the, the right decision for yeah. both you and the city too. I I see a real need for us to have a full time city attorney always here, which we didn't probably make it to the prudent decision last year, but now we need need to do it now. So I can hear the council members. I'm having a hard time hearing John. So if I repeat what you said, John, I apologize. Um. I, this will move forward regardless. This is just kind of informational purposes for you guys tonight, <clears throat> including the uh, prosecutor edition and the emergency management edition. Sorry, I've got uh, like a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> uh, they'll go to public hearing and workshop next week and then to council for the decision on the budget amendment the following week. <clears throat> if you choose not to keep anything in the budget amendment, I can modify it at that time as well. So. We're going to discuss emergency preparedness yet. That's next. Correct. And and these are included in your budget amendment. So if you choose to approve these, it is fully budgeted for 2022. Thank you. Um, and we'll move on to the next decision card. 
Yes, sir. Your emergency preparedness. Yes, sir. So first of all, giving credit where credit is due. I think putting this together was one of Woody's last acts before he was <laughs> to retirement. I can see Woody's name all over there. Yeah. <laughs> so we are appreciative of that. Um, yes, the decision part here, uh, sort of a limit, a two-year duration. As you all know, up until, well, now, um, emergency management. So in addition to Woody being coordinator, he was clerk and he was also department head. Uh, when he departed, his coordination activities uh, came to me. Um, in addition to the items that he was taking care of all over all those years, we are now members of the EPIC uh, Emergency Management Coalition with the cities of Uala, uh, Sumner, Carbonado, Buckley, uh, and Wilkeson. Uh, and there's a lot of work involved in that. For our needs, the city of Bonnie Lake is really out of date in our emergency preparedness. Uh, many of the planning documents that we have date from two years um, So we don't have current plans in place, although we're beginning to we know what we need to do in the event of an emergency. Uh, our EOC, while we do have a space for it, uh, really needs somebody who can look after it, properly stock it, uh, and make some determinations and some planning efforts for how we are going to move forward with an actual emergency operation. We had a little bit of a fiasco inhabiting that place, and it became, that was really the time where it became more apparent that we really needed to create a position, give, dedicate time to and so this position would be that. Uh, they would be the central coordinator. Uh, they would be the lead contact with EPIC. Uh, and then in addition to that, they would be working with staff here on site on many different efforts. Uh, documents that I mentioned, uh, we need to consider, uh, should we keep free supplies or staff should an uh, should or for the public, or how do we want to manage that? There's many different things, many different emergencies. Uh, 2009, right before swine flu, we would have thought that easily an emergency is going to be an earthquake or a volcano. 10, 10 12 years down the road now, we know that an emergency will take many past year, years almost. So having a person dedicated to emergency management here at the city would be a big bonus for us and allow us to finally get caught up on some much needed. Uh, just to give you an idea of the scope of work that the person would position be engaging in, EPIC group currently with EPIC, I have anywhere from four to five meetings a month with that organization. We're working on operations plan for all the to the uh, Lahar Rapid Action Planning Group, which has been working with the school districts in order to develop a plan for getting the valley evacuated as quickly as possible and getting people here on the plateau so that they're out of danger. Uh, setting up different trainings and, and roundtable exercises. For instance, we're going to have a five uh, district event, training event next April, where we're going to have five different school districts involved uh, in uh, an exercise that will simulate a, a, a Lahar. How we would then work with the school districts. That one's pretty interesting. As we learned the other day, yesterday, at our joint board meeting, John and I went to, that's actually attracting the attention of New York news outlets because they're really interesting. So obviously emergency management is important, attracting a lot of attention. With that attention from the spotlight showing us. I want to say on the record anywhere that there were uh, suggestions that we put the EOC at the new public works center. More on the record. Someone <laughs> said that. <laughs> All right. Anything we need to do with this? You got any? I think it's great. Yeah, I know this is Woody's last uh, last wish, and you know, it was his first request 20 years ago too. So uh, question for John. Him, maybe that's him that logged in. And <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe he's logging in from Utah just to see the discussion. So being thought of Woody's position, his old position, is that going to be filled within the city, or uh, is this going to be something I'll be talking of the to future? Follow up with after the first year. Okay, so that was just some of the monies and bounce off together. Okay. Cool. Right. Terry, you got anything? I'm on good. That?
I'm good at that. Thank you. Is that the last of the decision cards? Yes. Yes. Okay. It is. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, thank Ryan. You. Thanks, Tina. All right. Um, item number 2AD21-157, uh, pay grade classification of the Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Bodepich? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the Chief Financial Officer is currently set at pay grade 24 on the classification table. Superintendent or the Public Services Director and the Police Chief are at grade 25. Proposing to move, elevate the Chief Financial Officer position. A grade 25 commensurate with the other. Uh, some things have changed over the past year since the chief financial officer was first board. Uh, in particular, uh, we had a uh, gentleman, Tony, I forget his last name, Coberton, I think, uh, who was our budget person who was helping and bringing forward the budget. Uh, when that individual left, the financial officer took over the responsibility for all seen. Elevate the chief financial officer a grade table from grade 24 to a grade 25. I agree. And, and this is on your uh, finance committee issues consideration tonight. I'm fine. Okay. And have we, um, it just seems like a lot of these things seem to be coming up lately and I, I love, thank you, Sherry, for everything she does, first of all. Um, I'm just wondering, should we, instead of doing these all one at a time, stuff, should we be doing like a salary survey for department heads to see if everybody's being paid properly, fairly? Um, would that be a more adequate use of our time? Yeah, so, so we generally do that when we uh, put together the non-represented total package. And so, and so yeah, and I believe this is the only one rec in recent memory where we've changed the position. Yeah, that's what I was going to add. Yeah. Like, is this the only one basically that is yes. out of flux with where it should be? I guess. Yes. yes. Uh, so that was done in September. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And where did it fall at that time? Uh, twenty-four. Okay. Um, and this is. On for tonight under finance committee. Okay. Issues. Have anything else on it? No. All right. Um, that's already on there, so we'll just yeah. move forward. Is that okay? Watching approval of minutes. Found one correction mistake. She corrected it. Now we slide into open discussions. Again, Councilmember Watson. Thank you. I've got nothing to do. Nothing. Two right. times in a row. Yeah. No. I'll be back on the stick. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Carter. Uh, I have nothing either. Oh, nothing easy for it. Wow. I don't have anything either. So, oh. thank you, everybody. Oh, I think great. I think we can uh, call this meeting adjourned. Cool. Okay.